name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let's take this time to quiet ourselves in the presence of the Almighty God. Abba Father, we thank you for this time, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the grace that you have showered upon us to respond to your calling, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all that you have done for us. We thank you, Lord, for being who you are, for allowing us to know you who you are, to giving, for giving us the grace to experience you in our lives. We thank you, Lord. Great and awesome God you are. Our creator, the source of our life. We thank you, we praise you. We adore you, Lord. We glorify you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. We glorify you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. I thank you, Jesus. We praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I praise you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. I thank you. I praise and adore you, Lord. We glorify you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. We praise you, Jesus. We praise you, Lord. Come, Lord Jesus. Take your place, Lord. Come, Lord Jesus. Lead and guide us, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We praise you, Lord. Great is your faithfulness, O oh God. You wrestle with the sinner's heart. You lead us. By still waters and to mercy, and nothing can keep us apart. So remember your people, remember your children, remember your promise, O oh God.
Lord, I praise you, Jesus. We praise and adore you, Lord. I glorify you, Lord. I thank you, Jesus. Praise is rising. Eyes are turning to you. We turn to you. Hope is turning. Washed away, washed away. Jesus, come into our midst, O Lord. Touch us, Lord. Fill us, Lord, with your grace to experience your presence here, Lord. We believe, Lord, when two or more gather in your name, you are there with them, Lord. Father God, we know that you are here with us. We believe, Lord, it is you who have called us. It is you who is doing everything in our lives, Lord. We thank you for that, Lord. Whatever we are, whatever good we have is from you, Lord. 
it's all about you lord jesus lord we take this time to acknowledge that you are a god who will never leave us you are a god who goes before us no matter how we turn away from you you are there lord to bring us back to make us walk according to your will and purpose in our lives we thank you father thank you lord that you are a god who makes a way when there is no way lord you are a god who always shows up when we are confused when every doors are closed you are the door that shows up for us lord we thank you lord we thank you lord for being there with us in the storms of our lives you were always there to show us that you will never leave us we thank you lord for all the trials the temptations the problems that we face in our lives it was at those times lord that we had experienced you the most we thank you lord thank you lord that you will never leave us lord we thank you we praise you lord we adore you lord we glorify you lord i thank you lord i praise you i adore you lord i glorify you lord i thank you jesus even though i walk through the valley of the shadows of death your perfect love is casting out fear and even when i caught in the middle of the storms of this life i won't turn back i know you are here and i will fear no evil for my god is very heart that holds on a glorious light beyond all compare and there'll be an end to the troubles but until that day comes we'll live to know you here on the earth and i will fear no evil for my god is If my God is faithful whom then shall I fear whom then shall I
the calm and to the storm. Oh no, you never let go in every high and every low. Oh no, you never let go, Lord, you never let go of me. Praise you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Let's thank and praise you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I praise you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. I thank you. I praise you, Lord.
Thank you, Lord. I praise you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. We glorify you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. We take this time to worship you, Lord, for who you are. You are the King of kings, the Almighty, everlasting God. There is no one like you, Lord. There is no one worthy for our praises, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We adore you, Lord. We glorify you, Lord. I thank you. I praise you, Jesus. I praise you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord.
Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for this time of praise, Lord. We thank you once again, Lord, for your presence. We thank you, Lord, for all the grace and mercies and favors and blessings that we are yet to receive. And we thank you, Lord, for everything that you have done for us. Praise the Lord. Hello, dear friends, and I'm glad to share with you a short reflection on what it means to be church. We live in difficult times right now when everything that we were used to has been thrown out of gear. We were so used to as Catholics attending maybe a Sunday Mass. It was such a routine for us. We were used to novenas. We were used to daily Mass. We were used to gathering together in prayer groups and maybe even rosary groups. But right now, all that physical gathering has become difficult. Right now, only these modern means of communication have come to us as a blessing so that I can share this encouragement and this challenge to all of us in the time of this pandemic. I'd like to begin my reflection by reading for you a passage from the first letter of St. Peter, chapter 2, verses 4 onwards. St. Peter is instructing the early Christians who were formed by him as communities. And he begins by telling them, Come to Jesus, to him, that living stone rejected by men, but in God's sight chosen and precious. And like living stones, be yourselves built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and he who believes in him will not be put to shame. To you, therefore, who believe, he is precious, but for those who do not believe, the very stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and a stone that will make men stumble, a rock that will make them fall. For they stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, that you may declare the wonderful deeds of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were no people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we may be feeling like we are passing through a kind of wilderness experience right now where we cannot attend church, where we cannot gather together as one community. And maybe we are feeling a kind of spiritual abandonment in this moment. But it is precisely in the wilderness, wilderness that God formed the people of Israel into his people, the chosen people of God. It is precisely in the wilderness that God gave him the commandments. It is precisely in the wilderness that Jesus was prepared for his mission. 
And so perhaps this time of pandemic and lockdown is a crucible through which God is forming us as his people. The chosen and living stones that St. Peter mentions in the reading that I read for you. At the very outset, I want to say something that may shock you. Many of you may be asking, when are the churches going to open? When can we go back to normal? When are the churches going to open? When can we go back to normal? Maybe God doesn't want us to go back to normal. Maybe God, from the very beginning, did not want us to go to church. What, Father? Don't go to church? What are you saying? Hear me out. Let me explain what I mean. In the Western world, we see some of the most beautiful, magnificent structures built for the glory of God. Churches that housed thousands and thousands of people who gathered every Sunday, maybe every weekday, to worship the body and the blood of Jesus. What has happened to these churches over the years? Over the years, they have gradually become abandoned. Many of these beautiful structures where God's name was worshipped, where his body and blood were, were honoured and venerated with great devotion, they have turned into nightclubs and discos where God's name is often forgotten and very often blasphemed. How did we come to this? For many, many years before the Second Vatican Council and maybe a few years after that, the priests were satisfied as long as the people were coming to the church, as long as the people were paying, praying and obeying. This was the role of the laity. As long as you paid your subscriptions, as long as you prayed your prayers, your rosary, and as long as you obeyed whatever the priest told you, you were a good Catholic. But what happened is, when the lay people faced the, the, the beauty and the attractions of the modern world, very soon their faith was challenged. Very often they found that their faith was irrelevant to their lives. They were not properly formed in the faith and that's why church began to become increasingly irrelevant to them. Maybe from the very beginning God did not want us to go to church but he wanted us to become the church. You see the church was built on the vision and mission of Christ. Some years ago we had this figure of Anna Hazare who started a stir in our country. And his mission and his vision was for an India that was free from corruption. He was the figurehead of the movement and he had the vision which led many people to follow him. But now, where are those voices? Jesus began a mission over 2000 years ago. And by our baptism, we have been called to share in his mission. His mission has not died. His mission of bringing the kingdom of God in this world is still alive. It's still incomplete. And we are living in a wonderful springtime of the church. Yes, this pandemic and this lockdown can be a wonderful opportunity for you and me to rediscover that priceless cornerstone of Christ and his kingdom that we are called to bring forth into this world. When Jesus walked the face of the earth, 
At one point in his ministry, in Luke chapter 12, verse 49, we read that Jesus looked upon Jerusalem and he said, how I came to bring a fire into this earth and how I wish it were already burning. What is this fire that Jesus was speaking about? Our founder of the Redemptorist, St. Alphonsus Liguori says, that that fire is the fire of God's love burning in the hearts of individual human beings. When Jesus came into the earth, there was a, a hundred and one social, political and moral problems that were facing his society. But Jesus did not become a political activist. He realized that behind the problems of the world, was a more fundamental flaw. The flaw in the human heart that has lost God through sin. And Jesus came to bring a revolution of holiness and love that would break down barriers, that would break down walls and build bridges across people. Jesus' method of functioning was touching individual lives with love. The love of the Father that he himself experienced, he allowed others to experience through his words, through his touch, through his prayers. It is that same mission that you and I have been born into through our baptism. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, God's love has been poured into your heart and mine. That is the fire that Jesus wanted to set a blaze on the face of this earth. And it is a blaze, my dear brothers and sisters, if only we have the eyes of faith to see. In this pandemic, so many people have reached out to the needy, to the vulnerable. In this pandemic, in this lockdown, God is opening our eyes to see the needs of those most vulnerable. The love of God reaches out most particularly to the poor, the needy. And we can see in our country, our eyes are being turned towards vulnerable migrant workers, the elderly, little children. Jesus wants each one of us to have a burden to reach out and make a difference, even in this pandemic and lockdown. He wants to challenge you and, to me, and me not to get used to routine. You see, very often in the pre-pandemic days, there were certain attitudes that we consciously or unconsciously fostered in the church. These were attitudes that we, without speaking about them, we were living these attitudes. We had unconscious images in our minds of what it means to go to church. The first image that I want to present to you is that of a hostel. Now, what's a hostel like? You usually have a warden who checks who's in and who's out. And unless you give your attendance at the right times and the right places, you're found at the right places at the right times, uh, you can't be considered a member of the hostel. And so we had this attitude in the church that as long as I showed my face at the right times, at the right seasons, I was a good Catholic. Supposing I went for a Sunday Mass regularly, which is a good thing. Supposing I was seen at Good Friday and Easter, that was enough. But the obligations that the church presents to us is just the bare minimum that we need in order to be considered as Catholics. But it doesn't by any means make us good disciples of Christ. God does not want us simply to go to church. He wants us to become the church. 
And so for those of us who were satisfied with just the routine of going for Sunday Mass or appearing at Easter or Good Friday or Christmas, maybe in all our churches we need to put out a board that says we are open throughout the year and on weekdays too. Jesus wants us to be related to him very intimately and he doesn't get satisfied, although he's very happy when we come every Sunday and on Easter and Good Friday. But, but perhaps in this time when routine is thrown out the window, he's opening our eyes to something deeper. The second image is that of a ICU. In these times of crisis, Maybe the ICU is very much in demand. But it is only in times of crisis that we think of an ICU. And for many of us, the thought of church was only when we had a need or a crisis. My son or my daughter needs to get admissions to college and so I'll run to the parish priest to get a sign. Or it's time for my children to get confirmation, so I better pay up my subscriptions. Or there is some crisis in the family, financial, relational, some kind of conflict, some health issue, someone met with an accident, a death. That's when we think of church. It is said that some people are found in church only on three occasions when they are hatched, when they are matched, and when they are dispatched. When they are hatched means when they are born, they want to be baptized. <laughs> when they are matched, they want to get married. And when they are dispatched, when it's time to go and meet their maker. But the church is much more than just an ICU to satisfy my needs. The church is the body of Christ. It's the visible face of Christ on the face of the earth today. What are we communicating to the rest of the world by our attitudes towards church? The third image that I'd like to present to you about the church is the petrol bunk. And, you know, when do we think of a petrol bunk? When our tank is empty. And so we used to approach church as our, regularly, as our regular Sunday fill-up. So we'll come with religious duty every Sunday to participate in our Sunday Masses. We would, you know, very devoutly participate and pray and listen to the Word of God. But if I happened to meet you at the end of the Mass and I asked you, um, how was the Mass and how, what, what inspired you in the sermon? You might have been able to say, you know, Father, the sermon was very good. And then I could ask you, you know, what touched you particularly? Well, maybe, um, you know, you would struggle to remember a single point. And apart from that, perhaps there might have been some of us who were going regularly for Sunday Mass, but then throughout the week, there was no room for prayer, there was no room for the word of God, there was no room for the rosary or time together with the family. All these are symptoms of approaching the church like a petrol bunk. I get my fill up every Sunday and then I waste it all throughout the week. I get spiritually drained at the end of it all and I can come back on a Sunday to get my regular fill up. We need a fill-up every day, if you ask me. Because by the end of the day, when we've been working and relating with people, having conflicts with them, we do need the grace of the Holy Spirit to fill us at the end of the day, making an examination of conscience, asking the Lord to fill you with energy for the next day, the grace of good sleep, My dear brothers and sisters, don't get me wrong. All that I have said that was pre-pandemic church was good. It made us good Catholics. 
but it doesn't make us good disciples of Christ. And maybe that's what this pandemic is teaching us. In contrast to these images of church, I want to portray to you certain biblical images of the church. The first one is from Ephesians chapter 5 verse 25. It's the passage where St. Paul is comparing the relationship between Christ and his church to the relationship between a husband and a wife. And his argument is basically this, that just as Christ has laid down his life for his church, like a husband should lay down his life for his bride, the church who is the bride of Christ must be ready to lay down her life for the mission of Christ. That is the depth of the call that you and I have received by our baptism. The word mass, the English word mass, which is the word we use for our Christian worship in the Catholic Church, is derived from the Latin word missio. It's a translation, transliteration of the Latin word missio. And that means we are sent out on a mission at the end of every Eucharist. It's not just about gathering and getting my needs filled, but it's about being inspired by Christ, His Word, being strengthened by His body and blood, and then sent out to become His body and blood in the earth. That is the true meaning of our faith. Just as Christ breaks His body and sheds His blood for us in every Eucharist, you and I are called to break our bodies and shed our blood so that others may come to experience the love of God in Christ. And so we cannot set limits to what we can do. As Saint Peter says, like living stones, be yourselves built into a spiritual house. Be a holy priesthood, each and every one of us, the baptized, are priests. Yes, you are a priest. And you are called to be a mediator between people and God. That's what a priest is. Communicating Christ's love to them by your words and actions. That's the beauty of our mission as Christians. And then, he says, offer spiritual sacrifices to God through Jesus Christ. This is what it means to be Christian. That I belong to Christ. That Christ lives in me. And I live in Christ. This is the depth of what it means to receive communion. How often should I receive communion, Father? It all depends on how much you love the Lord. But mind you, the early Christians found it very difficult to gather together to worship. Sometimes they had to gather in catacombs. Sometimes they had to gather in their own houses. But their gathering together was not an end in itself. Their gathering together was so that each of them would be strengthened to be missionary disciples, spirit-filled missionary disciples. That's what Pope Francis has been calling all of us to become. And so this time of pandemic and lockdown can be a springtime for the Catholic Church in India, where you and I begin to rediscover that Christ is with us. Even though we cannot receive Him sacramentally sometimes, He is still with us. With the longing to gather together once again, we continue our mission as far as we can through prayer, through reading of scripture, through meeting online, through reaching out to the poor and the needy, to become a voice for those who suffer injustice in our society, 
when all the people in positions of power and decision making capability are taking things lightly we can become the change that needs to be done the second image is from 1st Corinthians chapter 12 verse 12 here St. Paul speaks of the church as the body of Christ you see before Vatican II what used to happen was that the laity considered themselves somewhat as not as holy as the priests and the religious it was the priests and the religious who had to engage in mission it was only they who had to proclaim the gospel it was only they that had to bear witness we are poor sinners after all that was the understanding but the church is not just the hierarchy we need both Christ the head and Christ the body to work in unison in order for us to be church and we had so many divisions among ourselves but what we need right now is to recognize that in the church we need to have unity in diversity we shouldn't see diversity as a threat the laity as a threat towards the clergy or the religious or the religious and the priesthood as a threat to the lay mission no we should see ourselves as mutually complementing and building each other up strengthening strengthening each other in our vocations working together for the common mission of building the kingdom of God on earth and the third image that I'd like to share with you is from 1st Peter chapter 2 verse 17 here Saint Peter gives instructions to the disciples it's actually uh, uh, somewhere midway in the chapter 2 that is verse 17 among all the instructions that Peter is giving to the disciples he says honor all people love the brotherhood love the brotherhood other translations would make it love the family of God so the third and last image that I want to leave you with is church as the family of God and as a family where each one pulls his weight in order to make the family survive or to thrive each one of us in the family of God called the church have got a responsibility each according to our age each according to our state each according to our ability our witness in this wounded world does not go to waste never imagine that I cannot do that much how can I be a witness how can I be an evangelizer I am so scared to speak not everyone is called to be a preacher not everyone is called to be in the limelight and it's not necessarily those who are in the limelight that are the best evangelizers it's every silent word of kindness every act of forgiveness everything born out of love for others with a smile that goes a long way to building the kingdom of God on earth and it is also those heroic acts of service towards the poor of generosity towards your neighbor that are acts in which people can recognize the goodness of Christ so never underestimate what you can do for the kingdom of God there's nothing too small and there's nothing too big that you can offer to the Lord and so I end my reflection my dear brothers to invite you not to go to church back to the normal but to establish a new kind of normal that you recognize that whatever you participate in church you need to live out in daily life 
whatever you hear being proclaimed in the closed walls of the churches, you are called to proclaim from the roof, rooftops of society. May the sacred heart of Jesus that longed to bring the fire of the Holy Spirit upon the earth set us on fire with the desire to be spirit-filled missionaries in our day and our age with respect for people who believe differently from us with care to build bridges and not walls May you and I be filled with the fire to spread the love of Jesus on this earth. And may Mary, our mother of perpetual help, always intercede for us, keeping us close to her son. Thank you for your patient listening. May God bless you and use you powerfully for his kingdom. Amen.